Welcome to the Totally Honest Cooking Show. I'm Mark. Today we're doing crock pot beef birria. This recipe was sent to me by my friend Katie via a site called John's I Cooked. Recipe in the description below. Okay, in front of me we have a two pound beef chuck. You can use two to three pounds. This was the largest one they had in the store. I'm taking a pinch full of salt, doing half pinch of salt, doing the other half, smear that around. Another little pinch of salt. It's a thick cuff cut a little it's a thick cut of beef so you're going to use a lot of salt because it's going to help break it down and it's also going to have to get the flavor deep into it you're going to flip it over and you're going to repeat with the hand that didn't just touch the meat come out over to the stove top cast iron high heat we're going to let this heat up sometimes i even let it go till the iron is smoking just a little bit while that is going, I'm going to go back over this with the pepper. Just make sure the surface is covered with your freshly cracked pepper. Same on the other side. If you're really feeling yourself, you could do the salt and pepper the night before. And then you can refrigerate overnight. Or you can do this an hour beforehand. I'm not gonna because I woke up late. Okay, we got our skillet ripping hot. We're going to do a sear. And I'm gonna let that go for about five minutes. If it gets too smoky, I will turn the heat down. Okay, it's been four minutes. Pretty good. Gonna do the other side. I'm also gonna do the sides and the bottom. I only did two minutes on the back side. I don't want it to get too dark and crispy. I don't want it to burn. All right. Okay, I've thrown the beef in the pot. Now we're going to start throwing other things in too. This really is the kind of recipe where you're just throwing stuff in a pot. All right. So I got a tablespoon of cumin, tablespoon of oregano. If you can get it, Mexican oregano. This stuff is slightly different from the garden variety. If you can't get it, don't sweat it. It'll be great. Regardless, we're just going to throw that in there with reckless abandon. Then, I'm throwing in a cinnamon stick, teaspoon of coriander, teaspoon of paprika. You can use spoked paprika with the adobo sauce going in there. I don't think it's going to matter that much, but whatever. Fourth a cup of apple cider vinegar. Beef broth, one whole 32 ounce container. Now, before we can add the rest of this stuff, we gotta do have a little bit to do. I've got four dried guajillo chilies. We're just gonna take the stems off. You can leave the rest in. It doesn't say to stem them or seed them. Usually for this sort of thing, I would, but I've never made this recipe before, so we'll see but always take the stems off. There's no reason to leave the stems on. And I'm just gonna drop these in the pot. You can do it strategically if it makes you feel better. Four sides to a pot, four peppers, you know, whatever. Next up, we've got eight cloves of garlic crushed. So we're just gonna crush them, right? Pretty simple, pretty basic. Give them a little crushy crush. Now, if you're like me and you're using a giant knife, don't pulverize, just crush. Next, we have a red onion, which I've cut in half, and we're just going to thinly slice. Don't go nuts here. We also need half a teaspoon of fresh ginger, so I'm just going to peel it with a spoon like I always do, and then I'm going to grate it. Okay, I'm gonna throw my ginger in. That was half a teaspoon, grated. Then my onions and my eight cloves of crushed garlic. Add in my three bay leaves. 
throw in a can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. That's 14 and a half ounces. Chipotle's in adobo sauce. We're gonna add five. Maybe a little bit more sauce. There we go. You can throw the rest of that into a freezer bag and freeze it for a month or two. And then one tablespoon of tomato paste. Now we're supposed to stir. You may have to remove your beef to stir. We'll see, you know. Jockey it around however you need. But we do want to get these things incorporated. Once your top is on, you're going for eight hours on low. And I'll be back in eight hours to see how this went. After a long cook, we're ready to shred. We've evacuated the meat and we've got two forks to shred with. You might have to break off little chunks before you start tearing into it with both your forks, right? The meat's pretty good. There will be a lot of flavor in the sauce though. So if the meat's not up to your standards, don't worry. If you feel a ton of resistance, then you might want to cook it a little longer. You will get some just because it's a tough hunk of meat. Once the beef is good and shredded, we're ready to move on to the sauce. Now, I really don't want to break out the blender, so I'm trying the immersion blender. So we're just going to motorboat it and see what happens. <laughs> we were supposed to fish out the cinnamon stick and the bay leaves before I did that. Don't worry, it'll be okay. That's a whoopsie doodle right there. Okay, I found two out of three bay leaves and the cinnamon stick, so I did okay. Okay, once it's mostly smooth and appears to pass the smoothness test, we're ready to move on to the next step. Now, if for some reason you're not ready to finish it, this just yet, because you got a screaming migraine and it's 8.30 at night, you can refrigerate everything you've made so far and pick it up tomorrow like I'm about to. Regardless of when you make them, they're gonna come together the same way. You're gonna want some diced onion. This is yellow onion. You're gonna want some chopped cilantro and this is my good friend Oaxaca cheese it's a string cheese sort of situation you can replace it with string cheese I would probably just use mozzarella and you will see that you can just get your hands in here and peel bits off this is as dangerous as string cheese if you are someone who is addicted to cheese cut some strips down you know you do you take my sauce Pour it over my beef. That's two cups of the sauce. There is a lot more sauce remaining. You'll see in a sec as we get our assembly line together. Mix the sauce in so everybody gets to know each other. Okay, for those of you that worry about this sort of thing, I always mess up the first one. Look at the first one. It imploded on me because I did it wrong. So let me show you the trick. You get two tortillas. Preferably stable tortillas. You dip them in your sauce. You throw them down on your hot pan. Cheese. As much cheese as you want. That might be too much cheese. Onion. Cilantro. Add your beef. And we're gonna fry this for about two minutes like this. Always eat your failures, your failures are delicious. Okay, two minute mark, we're gonna fold it. Yeah, see how much better that is? I told you that was too much cheese. Okay, stick that there. That was so good, I'll show you again. Throw down your oil, might be too much oil. Again, it's fine. 
Your mistakes are always delicious. Double dip. Drop. Fan. Some cheese. Remember, I like the cheese. Onion. Cilantro. Beef. Fold. Now, if we want to be real fancy, we can add some more of this sauce to the top. Let those spices work their way in. Give it a little flippy flip. Hit the other side a little bit. Give it another little flippy flip. Okay, now if you're gonna serve it this way, if you wanna eat it with your hands, you can put the sauce in a little ramekin dip. I'm gonna do it both ways because why not? I'll probably make a couple more too. Anyway, birria tacos, slow cooker, like, subscribe, ding the little bell, maybe comment down below, give me your favorite recipe, and I'll try it out. <laughs> See you next Wednesday. Bye.